Welcome back to Conquest Creations. In this game, we have some pure competitive Middle Earth strategy battle game. It's me going up against Alex, and we've both taken our armies that we took to the Australian Masters competition. The gloves are off. This game is truly to figure out who's the better SBG player. Hi, I'm Jacob, the Conquest Creator, and in this battle report, I'm going to be taking my Gondor army. This is the exact army that I took to the Australian Masters competition, where I came 7th out of 77. Alex, what place did you come Masters? 14. Oh! If our track records prove to be accurate, I'm feeling confident. Hey guys, it's Alex and I'm back for another battle report against Jacob. I brought Solidan to lead the force with the Betrayer, who's a ring rate that gives my forces with poison, reroll, all failed to wound. So we've got a lot of shooting, we're going to have a lot of rerolls doing a lot of damage. Amongst them as well, we have Raza, who's an assassin that's going to be trying to kill Jacob's heroes. And the Taskmaster, who is a underrepresented choice, I think, but I think he's so powerful, giving, giving me half my might back for heroic moves, which, which I'm going to be calling a lot of. There's a lot of heroic marches, which happen a lot as well. In my army, my leader is Faramir. He's leading 15 Eskiliath veterans. I've also got Kyrian, a Knight of the White Tower, Damrod and Boromir, but this is Boromir of Gondor, so he's from the Fellowship Army list. The theme for this army is that it's the departure of Boromir. He's going to be leaving his men and going to Rivendell, which is why Faramir is the leader. It also is why Gondor doesn't get their plus one courage army bonus, because Boromir is leaving, so they're afraid. Uh, we are playing Fog of War, so we have to choose a hero to assassinate, a hero to protect, and an objective to hold. I've chosen the Betrayer to keep safe, to assassinate, I've chosen Syrian, and we've chosen the house in the back right corner of the board as my target. The hero of mine that I want to protect is going to be Damrod. I want to kill Raza. I want to take the stables to rain peace. The only other objective is breaking Alex, and I'm hoping I can just go in, do damage, and get some kills. And with that, we are ready to start this game. This obviously starts with deployment where we both placed our armies. In Fog of War we're starting 24 inches away from each other, so we're quite a long way away giving us plenty of time for shooting and rearranging as our lines approach. As we're setting up for this game, I'm definitely nervous about taking this army out against Alex's. Now he did come 14th at Masters, but he had a unlucky run, so I am scared that I'm about to feel the wrath of the Haradrim. Now I know my army's good and can handle it, but Alex is a really good player. We've both played at a ton of tournaments, so this is going to be a very tight game. The Betrayer is such a key piece for Alex. He put him down in the middle of his line because the Betrayer is able to spend a point of will to give him re-roll failed wounds. My Nether White Tower went over on the flank and the last model to go down was Boromir of Gondor just in the center. And you can see in this photo how our armies are spread out, so let's start the game. And turn one went to me controlling my Gondor and everything is just trying to run forwards as quickly as possible. My archers moved up full because we didn't have line of sight and Alex out shoots me. So I know that if my archers stay back, they'll just get shot off the table. I've kept Boromir in his nice central location so that if I need to, I can call a heroic march with him in the future. Alex's movement was mainly just shimmying his guys around. He made sure that all of his archers only moved 3 inches because he wants to put as much damage on me as possible. And at the start of the turn, the Betrayer had spent a point of will, meaning that every model in Alex's army will get re-roll to wounds with their shooting. So I'm kind of afraid here. Three archers going for the Citadel Guard on horse. Up down. And come on. Nothing. Massive volley going into those Gilead Guard spearmen. So fours to hit from 13 archers. Lots of in the ways. Sixes to wound. Sixes, yep. And we reroll all failed to wound. We're gonna pick them all up and hopefully get at least one. So that's from the betray giving you all failed to wound. So far the betray is not doing too well. Nothing, but now the back rank still defend six, so sixes to wound. We get one. One kill. And with the rerolls, no, nah, just one. Unfortunately, Alex was far from done there, so he managed to take out that spearman, but archers elsewhere managed to kill one of my fountain court guard who needed sixes by fours to wound because he had a shield on him, and then another archer managed to kill another Iskiliath veterans. Three casualties hurts. All right, priority. One. So it goes to me again. I didn't want that, so it means you'll be able to adjust to my movement, but nothing to do about it. 
If you like the look of these buildings, they were designed here at Conquest Creations. If you want to pick up the STL files so you can download them for your own gaming table, you can find them on the Conquest Creations website. We also have some new terrain on the way in the form of the Kingdom of Azragor, which is an evil style terrain that I think could represent Mordor, Barad-dûr, Dol Guldur, or Angmar really, really well. On the website, you can find a free building from the Kingdom of Saxonia and the Kingdom of Azragor projects. And if you want to get the full sets, the Kingdom of Azragor is launching on Kickstarter in late January. While the Kickstarter is running, you can also get the Kingdom of Saxonia Kickstarter set at the original price as an add-on. By picking up the terrain that we've designed here at Conquest Creations, you're allowing us to create more videos just like this one. And once again, I'm just running forwards in my movement phase. I don't want to be losing three models a turn to shooting because that means by the time I get to Alex, I will have lost 12 models at this rate. Hopefully with some of my archers, I can get some hits back. But before I start shooting back at him, I'm running into this building so that I'll have some cover. And the Fountain Court Guard are running up behind this wall, which means that our most elite troops will have some extra cover, so I don't think Alex is going to target them. In his movement, he was just shimmying around. He knows eventually I'm going to reach him, and he wants his lines to be ready to surround me. And some of his archers moved, but only just going half. This is what the board looks like. I'm just over 12 inches away from Alex at this point. So there's two more turns of shooting at full strength, and then maybe one more, unless I call a heroic march. Now my shooting actually went first here because I stayed still with these Citadel Guard on the side which seems a bit sacrilege but they didn't get any kills. Alex shot back, started by taking out an Eskilith veteran and then this big block of archers shot in and managed to take out another one which is really painful. Our casualties are racking up. Priority this turn went to Alex which was a nice change and I have decided to call Heroic March with Boromir because I'm taking too many casualties on my way up to him. Losing priority is always great when your lines are unengaged because you can adjust your movement after you've seen what your opponent is doing. And this turn, I'm going to be able to do that. Alex just opened up this building so that he can put some guys forward, making sure they're ready for when my guys get there, they'll be in a good position to hopefully wrap around me. Well, hopefully for Alex, but for me, I'm going to try to stop that. And the rest of his guys just shimmy. One priority this turn, which means with Jacob's March, we're going to be fighting next turn. So I've had to adjust the battle lines ready to receive. So I've left plenty of gaps for cavalry bases to fit through so we can maybe get some Serpent Riders into Boz and cancel his charge bonus. Raz has joined up behind the line so he can sneak around and assassinate his target whenever he wants. And we've had this group of archers kind of shift into the forge so they can hold that kind of defended position. And if they get flanked, so be it. Now that does take it into my movement and I wasn't very clever and I left some guys in front of Boromir meaning that they're going to have to move before Boromir's heroic march will go up. So they're just going 6 inches and now there's a clear spot for Boromir. He can run up to 15 because he's on his horse but he doesn't need to go quite that far and then the rest of the troops around him are just pushing forwards. I've sent Faramir way forwards but he's pretty durable so I'm confident that he'll be able to survive and then the rest of the troops will be able to go in and help him out. Everyone else is just continuing our theme of running forwards. Damrod and his Osgiliath veterans have made it into a building. This is great for me because I need to keep Damrod alive and inside a building he'll have a good defendable position and the archers are going to be able to shoot out at Alex from inside here. Alex was truly blessed by the dice gods in this shooting phase and unfortunately he killed all three of the Osgiliath veterans who ran forward with Faramir, meaning Faramir is exposed but there's a lot of friends behind him. And Suladan took his shot, went straight into Boromir because there was a clear shot at him now. Got the 6 to hit, got the 6 for the in the way, and got the 6 to wound. So that is one wound on Boromir. So that was a brutal turn of shooting. I took 3 casualties and a wound on Boromir. So I've lost 8 models in total, so I'm really going to need to do a lot of damage when I arrive into this combat. Uh, let's roll priority. I'm on a 1, you're on a 6. We'll activate poison on... So that's his fourth will point spent. Eight casualties to shooting isn't particularly nice, but it's not the end of the world. I've still got 30 models on the table who are good at fighting. So the betrayer's moving. And what's he gonna do as he moves? So he's gonna cast a three dice compel at Boromir. We've opened up a nice gap since we killed that as a veteran in the way. He's only got the one will point. Hopefully you at least have to spend some might. At best, we're gonna tempt him forward. He's eating a five. So Alex, you got a 5 on the compel, what are you going to do about that? So I had a long hard think about it, I'm actually going to spend one of the Betrayer's Might points to turn that into a 6. I know you're going to essentially have to resist it, because if I move him forward 5 inches and get on him, we're going to do a lot of damage and probably just kill him outright. So I know you're going to have to spend a lot of Might, and I want to 
push the case. So we're going to mine up to a six. All right, here's my one resist. I've only got the one point of will. It's on a four, so I will spend two points of mine to resist that because otherwise I think I could be dead in there. This was an expensive play, but it was worth me spending that might because otherwise Soledan would have gone in, struck up, surrounded me, and I think that would have been game over for Boromir, and I want to keep him alive so I can spend all six points of might. The rest of Alex's force is just pushing around, and that took me into my movement phase, and I've got a big opportunity here. I'm able to go in with all of my higher fight troops and hopefully get kills on all of these fight three Haradrim that are only defense four, and I'm getting three heroes into combat. If each of them can just kill one model every single turn, that's going to add up really, really quickly, and that's one of the strengths of my list. It's just a lot of solid, low-tier heroes that are able to kill a model per turn. Everyone else is just shimming up, and I'm going forward with these Citadel Guard archers because they don't have many targets this turn, but I might be keeping them back and shooting at Alex's spear supports in future turns. And finally, I'm making sure Damrod is safe inside this building. I need to keep him alive, and I reckon he's going to be Alex's target, so if he's safe, I'm happy. And the shooting phase this turn was interesting. Alex shot a ton of guys in. You did get a kill, but it was not one of my models. You killed your own spearman who was fighting Boromir. He's probably the best person to kill on my side. Yeah, look, he was in a lot of trouble anyway. Combat? Combat. Any heroes? You don't look like you have anyone in combat. No heroes in combat. I assume you're going to call something though. Uh, I'm not going to worry about calling anything. I just want to get kills here. Let's do it. And the first combat is Faramir just fighting Haradrim Spearman. I've set the bar on a five. I will take a banner reroll from Sword and six inches away. Gets a five, but you have the five value. Force wound. Oh, that is a cocked dice. Got the kill. Now this is a big turn for me to catch up on a lot of the damage that Alex has done for me. Faramir got a kill, the Knight of the White Tower got a kill, and then the rest of these, I unfortunately really underperformed, unable to get as many kills as I wanted to. Still took off some guys, but I didn't get them all. Priority this turn went to me, and Alex called a heroic move with his Taskmaster. On the roll of a 4-up, he gets this for free and doesn't have to spend his point of might. So, let's see it. Hell yeah. So Alex, I'm not countering that, that goes straight into your move. Let's do it then. Now from the get-go, my army has a lot more might than Alex's army does, but he has this Taskmaster. The Taskmaster is a unit that I've seen podcasts talk about and other channels talk about as being a pretty mediocre choice, and I really hope that this battle report helps show that they are absolutely a top-tier unit. They can produce so much might for your army that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an army like mine that starts with a ton of might. And the Betrayer chose not to cast any spells this turn, because Alex knows if he wants to keep his poison up, he needs to be conservative with him. So far, Alex has used the Betrayer's poison rule every single turn of the game. That gives it all Haradrim models with poison weapons within 6 inches of him reroll all failed to wounds, and he's of course using it again now. This really, really increases the DPS of Alex's army massively. And I got Kyrian and the rest of my troops into battle, ready to fight, it's just a sheer war clash here. And here's our board at the end of quite a long movement phase. So there is a huge clash of lines in there and just a couple models on the peripheral that are going to be getting some shooting. The shooting phase was uneventful with neither of us getting any kills, so that takes us into the combat phase where we're talking about our heroics. And in this combat with the Knight of the White Tower and Barmia, I'm going to be calling a heroic strike. Are you going to be doing anything? Um, I don't mind using Raz's might in response, so I'm going to call a strike back. Alright, well, we'll see what happens when we get to that. And we started over on the flank where I managed to win the fight against these two cavalry, ones that I really, really want to kill, but I didn't manage to take them off. These guys are Defense 7, my Fountain Court Garb with Shield, so they're decently tanky and they're managing to win a few fights and get some kills. Kyrian did alright, getting a kill, and then we lost an Osgiliath veteran to one of those Abrakan Guard. Those guys hit so hard with Strength 4 and Burly. On the other flank, we just started by grinding down the line. We're both fight four in a lot of these combats because I have these Gilead veterans and Alex has the Serpent Guard, so he should be relatively evenly matched. I wound on fives, he needs sixes, but re-rolls his failed wounds. So far, the fight phase is going terribly and Boromir, of course, lost his combat to two Haradrim warriors. Not only lost his horse, he also took a wound, meaning he's just got one wound left. <laughs> Next fight didn't get any better with Faramir also taking a wound. And the final fight of the turn is my Knight of the White Tower fighting Raza. Alex, anything special happening here? So the Knight of the White Tower is Raza's target for his Serpent's Fang special rule. So I get plus two fight for this combat whenever and whenever I'm facing him from now on. 
All right. So that means your fight's six base, but we both struck. My fight value is lower than yours. All right. Let's see how this goes. Are you going to be using your dagger or your sword? I'm going to be using my two-handed Knight of the White Tower sword. He is also going to be stabbing. Oh, just going for it. I'm just going to go for the impale. I need to get it here. I will stab on one of my guys as well in the front rank. All right. So let me set the bar. Oh, oh that's, that's not very unfortunate. You're on a six. Doesn't matter what I roll. Uh, actually, I didn't need to stab because everyone's re-rolling everything. That's true. And do you just flash kill the Knight of the White Tower? I'll do Raza first, needing fives. And There's one wound. <sighs> so I have to choose. I'll, I'll... You're not trapped. Let's do my other dudes as well. So let's... I'll re-roll all them. Needing sixes. Nothing there. So Raza can re-roll his as well. You can either might it now or re-roll it. See what happens. I am going to just re-roll them. Cool. And we get the second word. Alright, so I need to pass my fate point to stay alive here. And I'll use my last point of might just to survive. And priority this turn went to Alex. I decided I'd call a heroic move with Barmir because he's close to dead and he still has might. Alex, what did you do about it? I have called back with the Taskmaster. Unfortunately, his might point wasn't free, so he's out of might, but he can still give his ability to other heroes in the following turn. So he'll yeah. stick around. Really showing his value in there still. They're such an effective unit, and I'm surprised I don't see the table more. You won the roll off, so that goes to your move with the Taskmaster first. Awesome. Let's see how he gets a couple people over there. They want to push over to that side, so I think the Taskmaster is going to shimmy forward just so we can get as many guys forward as possible, and we'll move from there. Now, I would have really liked this heroic move roll off so that I can reposition my line to make sure everyone's in the right position to get as many kills as possible. Suladan is going to run across and finally get into combat, charging into Kyrian. The Betrayer is going to back up, providing his poison to as many people as possible, and as he goes, throws a two-dice transfix at Kyrian, really just going hard on him. We're needing a four? Uh, yes, fours. Gets it on a five. Now I will be resisting that because Suladan's charged into me. I'll use my one point of will. Well, I've got a two. If I spend all three, I can't strike anyway. Yeah. So I'm not going to spend anything. I'm just transfixed. This is a massive bummer seeing a three might Kyrian in a lot of danger. I just hope that he's not Alex's target for the assassination component of Fog of War. Because if he is, I could be losing quite a few points in there. Now these Citadel Guard on horse are just pushing back. And here we are after we've moved. The lines are just clashing. And over here, I've sent my two Citadel Guard on horse back to try to do something about your little flanking force over there. These four Citadel Guard archers stood still and they shot over the fence and managed to get a kill on that watch through counter. Do you have any shooting this turn, Alex? Nothing at all. We've The three on the flank move forward to full six and Soledad's now in combat, so definitely not shooting. All right, now do you have any heroics to declare? Well... Unfortunately, with you failing to resist the transfix, you're fight four, I'm fight five, so I don't need to strike there. That is correct. I would love to strike with Kyrian, but that obviously won't be happening. Now, at this stage in the game, I know that even if I lose Kyrian, I've still got Boromir, Faramir, and the Knight of the White Tower, who can really, really outpace the killing power of Alex's army. So my goal is just to grind through him and hopefully break him. If I can break him, his army doesn't have great courage and he can kind of fall apart, whereas my guys have great courage. But around the combats, I'm losing a couple guys, but managing to get some kills as well. Faramir and Boromir both did their jobs as well as the Knight Tower. That's three kills this turn from those guys. If we can do that a couple more turns in a row, that's really, really going to add up. We definitely lost a couple models this turn, but we definitely outkilled Alex. Well, aside from Kyrian, but I think this was overall pretty good for me. And the last fight for the turn is Kyrian with a spear support, fighting an absolute bucket of guys. I've set the bar on a six. Okay. Sword and all four attacks, gets a five, he'll reroll his for his own banner. Raz will contribute one dice for spear supporting and my normal lad. Annoying. Uh, we're gonna get Raza to spend one of his might points to win the five. Cool, so you've won that. I'll push back, but I am knocked pro. Hopefully we just kill him outright, so let's just get Sword to do it. First strikes, rerolling everything because he also benefits from the Master of Poisons from the Betrayer. And he needs fives here. Yeah, fives. Four. Okay. And there we go. Take Kyrian out. And priority for this turn went to me, which was nice. Alex, what did you do? 
the betrayer is called a heroic move, and he's managed to roll the four plus, so he's kept his might point thanks to the ta taskmaster. So that's the second free might point from the taskmaster this game. So he's doing well. Now I did call one with Boromir because Boromir is almost dead, and he still has might. So this is the roll off. One, two, three goes evil, but a four, five, six goes to good. So that is my move. Now this move was a nice to have, but definitely not required. I'm just using it to make sure Boromir can go into some of the more elite troops and hopefully get as many kills as possible before he goes down. When he's outnumbered in combat, he can blow the Horn of Gondor, so hopefully he can get some free wins and just be a little bit more reliable. Elsewhere, my guys are just engaging Alex where they can. And with my heroic over, the betrayer who once again this turn declared that he was going to be using a point of will for poison is just shimming around for his heroic and he's not casting any spells because he is starting to run low on will. Zuladan charged in just because he's consistently able to kill a model in there. And then Alex started to climb some guys over this wall to try to get around the back. And I sent my Citadel Guard archers on horse further down so that I could start killing Alex's flanking force. Okay, he's going to come move behind this building. So, we just had a Serpent Rider disappear behind a building there. I hope that's not the one you're going for. We'll see. At least it will keep him out of shooting vision from these Citadel Guard on horse. We're going to get these guys to shoot back, because you've moved. I have the advantage this turn. I'd love to dismount them. Alright. And well, I think we'll just get this Serpent Rider to... Yeah, he's going to stand in front, and we're going to engage in the shooting war. Alright, interesting. The shooting war started well for me. One of these Citadel Guard killed one of the archers. They shot back, did not kill the Citadel Guard, they just dismounted him. And these four Citadel Guard shot and managed to kill the Watcher and a Haradrim Spearman. And that takes us into the combat phase. Alex, do you have anything to declare? So I thought about it last turn. Uh, Solane is going to call heroic combat. He's probably going to kill that Fountain Court Guard with all his rerolls and his charging bonus, and he's just going to redirect back into the middle and provide his banner effect to the rest of the line. My Fountain Court Guard is going to shield. I'm on a 5. Something. Ooh, you're on a 4. You've got a banner reroll. Oh! Just to drive it home. Wow, that that was fair enough, but just made me feel bad in the way you went about it. Let's now, roll it all. Needing 6s, rerolling every single dice if needed. And I might need to. It is needed. I surely won't spend my... Oh! You get the one. You did it twice where it's just the very last dice I saw. Where's Suladon gonna end up? He's literally just gonna be moving right here. Not only does it mean he'll provide his 6 inch banner right across the line, but it means that in case you kill some lads, he's blocking off Faramir or the Knight of the White Tower getting into the Betrayer and the Taskmaster, which may be one of your targets. Now I'm glad that Suladine ended up leaving this group of models behind because the stables that they're fighting right next to is the terrain piece I'm trying to capture. So if these guys can survive the battle, I should be able to get three points for my terrain piece, which goes a long way towards winning. The Knight of the White Tower got a kill and then Faramir won his fight, but couldn't get a four up to wound either the Serpent Guard or the Haradrim Warrior. And then Boromir with his three attacks also won the fight, but also failed to kill. I really, really wanted those kills to help keep up with Alex's kill rate. Elsewhere, I didn't actually take too many casualties, so it wasn't too bad of a turn. Alex is on 17 dead models, so I only needed to kill four more to break him. So I could have done it if I had some lucky rolls, or would have gotten a lot closer with some average rolls. Unfortunately, they weren't on my side, so that goes to priority for next turn. Priority on this turn went back to Alex. I decided I'd use Boromir's last point of might on a heroic move, because he's almost dead. Alex, what'd you do? Betray a cold heroic move, unfortunately. Didn't get the four plus from the Taskmaster, so that is his last point of might gone. Alright, and they're all off when Alex's way. So, that's the betrayer's move. Where's he gonna end up? This is actually it's something I struggled over because he is in range of this entire flank over here. But I want him to move around and keep everyone around because I assume I'm gonna break very soon. Um, but unfortunately, I think he will have to stay where he is and make sure everyone can charge where they need to. So he's gonna stand right there. Alright, so that can go to the rest of your troops. Now losing this heroic move roll off was a little bit more problematic because I'm gonna get trapped in a few places this turn because there's now a hole in my line. Look, it's not the end of the world. I just need to be buckling down here and getting those four kills that I need to break Alex. And Damrod needs to stay safe because he has to survive this game. This is our board after the movement phase, continued clashes on the lines. And there's some interesting shooting. Damrod moved up half. So he can see the sneaky serpent guard behind that building. 
But you, of course, shoot first, Alex. So we'll see what happens. And I lost a horse in shooting, but these guys, Citadel Guard over here, managed to get a kill on a spearman. That takes us into the combat phase. Alex, do you have any heroics to declare? Soladan's going to use one of his two remaining points to call a heroic strike against Boromir, who doesn't have any might, so he can't strike back. Alright, let's see what your fight value gets to. If you're all a one here, we'll be the same. That was a two, so you're all good. Now, I'm going to make you take a courage test, because I will blow the horn of Gondor. Soladan will be doing it, so courage five. And he gets a 7, so we are fine. You're all good. Alright, uh, look, I could shield, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm on the 6. And are you stabbing on all the regular dudes? I have the 6. Yeah, so that will go to you. And Sword and himself should be able to do it. 8 dice getting 5s. Rerolling a, not rerolling 1s, and I roll lots of them, but 1 win's enough. Now losing Barmy here might seem like a big deal, and it kind of is, but I'm not that fussed. I don't think that Alex would have chosen him for his target to kill, and I didn't choose him for my target to stay alive, so he's not worth any victory points, and he's had a few dud turns where he hasn't actually gotten many kills, so it's not going to be that different not having him on the table. Now my flanking force on this side has been consistently shrinking, but they need to stay alive to get my terrain piece. This African guard managed to kill the Askill of Veteran in the doorway, so he has a clear shot at Damrod next turn, which is a problem, but Damrod still has a point of might, so hopefully he's okay. And here we are at the start of the next turn. Both of us ended up breaking that turn so it could get interesting Soledad is a hero of legend which is going to help him a lot but any progress is good progress priority went to alex's turn so i called the heroic move with faramir he called one with Soledad and didn't get it from the taskmaster for free and here's the roll off a one two three goes evil four five six goes good i got it okay that is absolutely massive faramir is going to start by leaving this enemy model's control zone entering the spearman's control zone and wrap into Soledad to tie him up the Knight of the White Tower has a lot of work to do here. He needs to pass a courage test to stay alive. That's good, he's still on the table. Next, he's going to try to charge the Betrayer. And he has succeeded. Alex, can you just put him into that Spearman and the Betrayer? Awesome. Well, what Jacob may have forgotten is Raza is here and the Knight of the White Tower was his target. So he's going to head over and join this combat and hopefully make the Knight of the White Tower pay for charging the Betrayer. And we'll actually, you know what, rub salt into the wounds. We'll get our servant right and join in as well. These troops got hit by a stand fast, so they just engaged my warriors on the side. The Taskmaster passed his courage check, and this Abrican guard charged Damrod. That is not good. I need Damrod to survive. Alex is just getting as many guys into this building as possible to get Damrod next turn if he survives. And this servant rider was the last one to take a courage test, and he fleed from the table. And that goes to my regular move, where these Citadel Guard, who auto pass their courage checks because they have bodyguard, are just moving up i wonder if they're doing anything <laughs> suspicious a little bit suspicious and here we can see a mistake that alex made he didn't leave any models in base contact with the train piece that means if the game ends this turn it's all mine and these two Citadel guard who have been shooting are going to move their full movement this turn just so they can get towards that house because it looks like that might be alex's objective I almost never ask people to like and subscribe, but today I'm breaking that rule. We're so close to 20,000 subscribers that if you've made it this far in the video, please consider adding a like and a subscribe. When we hit 20,000, we're going to do something special and I haven't quite decided what it should be yet. So let me know some ideas down in the comments and I might just choose yours. With that done, it takes us to the combat phase where no heroics were declared by Alex and I called a strike with Faramir. Alex, you have priority? Where do you want to start? You know what, let's test it. Faramir versus Uldan, let's just get into it. Do you want Before we roll our dice in the fight, I've got a 2 on my strike, which takes me to fight 7, that's all I need. Are you gonna shield? Uh, so, that is the question. Now, if I shield, I'm more likely to survive, which is gonna keep my bodyguard around the table, so I will be shielding. Do you wanna set the bar for me? <clears throat> sure. Oh! That's not good. That's also not great, because you have a banner roll. Just a big six, that's all we need. Oh, oh no, that is very, very sad. I didn't activate my poison, because I thought I might get charged, so it's just re-rolling at ones only. <sighs> Reroll a one. Okay, <laughs> fate point for Faramir to stay alive. Yes, oh. Faramir. 
And in these fights, as long as the game ends this turn, I'll get my terrain piece. So I'm not fussed if I'm losing guys this turn. I think the longer this game goes on, it will be really interesting because Alex's courage isn't great, but I'm kind of losing momentum here. Damrod versus an African merchant guard. I obviously want to keep Damrod alive here. Uh, I will use my last point of might to make that a three, but I'm only fight four, so we're equal. It's gonna roll off. One, two, three goes to the evil side. Uh, okay, so that goes to the African Merchant Guard. You have me in the corner, so I'm trapped in there. You just need threes to wound me because you're piercing, striking with your axe weapon swap. Oh, oh that is a cocked dice. I just need one more to confirm it. You've done one wound. I need to pass a fate point to stay alive here. And that is a three. I already used my last point of might. I will very sadly take Damrod out of the battlefield. And uh, that was the last fight. So Alex, we need to roll to see if the game's over. Let's do it. And on a one or two, the game will end. And That's that it. is it. Absolutely devastating to see Damrod go down in the final turn. I don't know why you'd be so sad. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion. Let's count up some points and see what the final score was. Let's tally up our scores. I got three points for claiming my terrain piece, while Alex got zero points for that one. We both broke each other, which means we get one point each for that. I wanted to keep Damrod alive, but unfortunately he died, so I get zero points there. And Alex gets three points for keeping the Betrayer alive. Finally, Alex gets three points for killing Damrod, while I get zero points because Raza survived the fight. That means we have a decisive victory in Alex's favor. We've won the battle. Unfortunately, the game ended first turn, so I gave up a couple more victory points than I would have liked. But in the end, we've won, and we've decimated the forces of Gondor. Good news.